So, I've been getting this question a lot more lately since releasing the first two videos, but there's really not a straightforward answer, so I'll answer the best that I can. So the question is, when should I consider getting on thyroid hormone replacement? This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel, and if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing Hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Well, first and foremost, we have to think about what are your symptoms. Are you having the classic symptoms of hypothyroidism? Longitudinally, uh, rich nails, dry skin, weak, weak integrity of your hair, brittle hair. Are you having temperature intolerances? Namely, do you feel cold a lot more? How about depression? That's another common one, and so is constipation. Those are classic, quote-unquote, common symptoms of hypothyroidism. If you have those, you should be investigated for a further workup of possibly having hypothyroidism. So, the classic way to evaluate if someone has hypothyroidism is to draw a TSH, which is also known as a thyroid-stimulating hormone. And the TSH is regulated by the hypothalamus releasing TRH, or thyroid releasing hormone which stimulates the pituitary to produce thyroid stimulating hormone and what TSH does is tell the thyroid gland to produce the thyroid hormones namely the potent ones T4 and T3 so the classic way to evaluate is to draw a TSH this pretty much evaluates pituitary function that's what most providers do they'll draw a TSH they'll say hey it's it's under 4.5 you look great well, not so fast. Personally, I think you should draw a full thyroid panel. At the minimum, you should get a TSH, free T3, and a free T4. What this will evaluate is the thyroid, is the thyroid actually having communication between the pituitary gland, and if it is, is your thyroid gland actually producing hormone in response to the TSH being released. Now, most people say a TSH under 4, under 4.5, is considered a gold standard for being, quote unquote, within the normal parameters. There's actually some new literature, and I believe the uh, National Academy of Clinical Biochemistry actually has changed their standards to where the cutoff for a TSH is at 2.5. And I fully concur with that and think that's more reasonable, as I find my, many people who have a TSH you know, three, four, in that range, which is quote unquote in the normal parameters, I find that many of those people tend to actually have an amalgamation of symptoms of hypothyroidism. Now, personally, if you have a TSH that's, you know, three or higher, 2.5 or higher, and you have classic symptoms, yeah, I, I, I do believe you would be a good candidate to initiate thyroid hormone replacement therapy. Now, in patients that do get on thyroid hormone replacement therapy, I think it's extremely wise that we also draw a vitamin D, which I've mentioned in a previous video, along with uh, thyroid peroxidase antibodies or antimicrosomal antibodies to further evaluate if you have Hashimoto's, which is the primary culprit, at least in the developed world, of why people do have hypothyroidism. Worldwide, why people have hypothyroidism appears to be iodine deficiencies. But in the most developed worlds, namely in the U.S., uh, Hashimoto's appears to be the underlying culprit for why most people have hypothyroidism. So say you have a TSH that's over 2.5, over 3, classic symptoms, let's begin therapy. After four to six weeks of compliant, and get a sip of drink, compliant therapy, meaning that you're taking your medication on a schedule, you're not missing doses, you're taking it like you should be, empty belly, at least an hour away from other medications or foods, and we come back, we reevaluate you, we'll determine, hey, are your symptoms improving? If they are, awesome, good, we're getting you, we're getting in the right direction. Also, we'll draw your numbers again to see how they've moved. Ideally, we want to see the TSH start going down in response to the introduction of thyroid hormone replacement. This is a negative feedback system. So as the TSH climbs up and gets higher and higher, 
it means the communication between the pituitary gland and the thyroid itself aren't actually communicating. It's like saying the pituitary is trying to yell louder and louder and louder at a thyroid that's walking further and further away. As the TSH starts climbing, that means you're becoming more and more hypothyroid. So in this case, when we introduce thyroid hormone replacement therapy, we should start to see the TSH becoming more and more suppressed. This is a good clinical response, at least in terms of the laboratory side of things. Now, we should also see the free T3, free T4s start climbing upwards in the right direction. This is also considered a good clinical response. Lastly, we want to evaluate your symptomology. If the TSH is going down and your free T3, free T4s are going upward in the right direction and your symptoms are improving, then we would consider that a good clinical response. Ideally, we want to treat until you have resolution of symptoms and an overall increased well-being uh, in quality of life. That's all for today. Try to keep it short and sweet like always. Look for more videos here in the next few weeks. Thanks for listening. And now, do this next. Click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization.